another Organism of the Week at the Bee Museum. Today, we're learning about the black-footed ferret, which is one of the rarest mammals in North America. It might look a little like a ferret from a pet store, but although it's similar, those domesticated ferrets were descended from the European polecat. And this black-footed ferret is endemic to the prairies of the United States. That means you can only find it here in America and nowhere else in the world. This is one of the reasons that the black-footed ferret is such an important animal, but the species has a wild and a troubled history. In the 1800s, European settlements in the American plains drove the black-footed ferret population down, and by the late 1950s, it was considered extinct. Almost 20 years later, to everyone's surprise, a small population was discovered in South Dakota, and biologists soon began a captive breeding program for the ferrets. But by 1979, the captive programs had failed, and the Blackfoot ferret was listed as extinct again. This time, though, it only lasted for a couple years. In 1981, a farm dog named Shep brought a single Blackfoot ferret to his owner in Wyoming. Biologists surveyed the area, found a population of around 100 ferrets, and new programs were established to monitor this population. It turns out they were discovered just in time, because after only a few years, disease drove the population down again to about 18 individuals and these were used to start a new captive breeding program. So the crazy ride still isn't over for the black-footed ferret. Captive breeding programs have been much more successful than the first try, and over the years, new populations have been introduced to the wild in many locations throughout Western United States. In the wild, there are about 500 mature ferrets at the beginning of 2020, but unfortunately that is less than the 1,000 mature ferrets when the population peaked earlier in the 2000s but wildlife biologists are working hard to get that number back up. One of the biggest problems for black-footed ferrets is related to their diet. Ferrets, like the rest of the weasel family, are carnivorous, which means they eat meat. But unlike a lot of the other weasels, the black-footed ferret is limited to almost exclusively one species, and that's the prairie dog. That's one reason ferrets' bodies are so long and narrow, because it helps them to slip into those prairie dog burrows and catch prairie dogs in their sleep. The trouble is that if prairie dog populations aren't doing great, black-footed ferret populations suffer too, and prairie dogs have a lot of threats of their own. They're often poisoned or driven out because they can be a pest for farmers and ranchers, and they're very susceptible to a disease called the sylvatic plague. An infection of the plague can wipe out an entire colony, and when the prairie dogs in an area are gone, the black-footed ferrets are essentially out of food. So one of the biggest things that's being done to help black-footed ferrets is helping prairie dogs fight the plague. Scientists scatter oral vaccines that look a little like dog treats around prairie dog habitat. They're dyed in bright colors to make them easy for prairie dogs to find, and they're flavored like peanut butter to make them as tasty as possible. The plague is mostly spread by fleas, so insecticides have also been used to kill the fleas in prairie dog colonies. Black-footed ferrets are also susceptible to the sylvatic plague, so they have to be vaccinated against it too. It's easier to do this with the captive ferrets, but those in the wild have to be caught and vaccinated. Black-footed ferrets are mostly nocturnal, and they're very elusive, usually hiding in old prairie dog burrows, which means this takes a lot of work to find them and vaccinate them. But it's important for humans to help fix the problems that we've caused and to protect the amazing animals on the planet. That's why scientists are so dedicated to monitoring the wild populations and keeping captive breeding populations safe and healthy. In the wild, baby ferrets are born in old prairie dog burrows in the early summer. Their eyes are closed and their mother has to take care of them for several months before they're old enough to leave the burrow. Once they come out, they have to learn how to hunt. They can learn from other ferrets in the wild, but in captivity, scientists allow them to spend a month in an outdoor preconditioning pen where they can be introduced to burrowing systems and learn to catch prairie dogs without having to worry about other predators that might want to catch them, like hawks, bobcats, rattlesnakes, and coyotes. Once they've learned to hunt and have been vaccinated against the plague, they can be released into the wild. The goal is to bring wild populations up to 3,000 mature ferrets. Once that happens, they can be removed from the endangered species list, and scientists have high hopes that we'll be able to do it. So that's all for today. Make sure to keep an eye out for next week's question form so you can send in your questions about Mormon tea, which is a plant that we'll be talking about next week. We'll see you soon.